All right, it is the beginning of the month and you know what that means. It is time for another Roll the Dice TBR. So I will link my previous Roll the Dice TBR games down below if you want to see more about how this game works but it's pretty simple. So I'm just gonna get right into it. I do have a new category on my whiteboard that I want to give a heads up on. Previously, my categories on my whiteboard were new release, so a book that comes out that month that I want to read, uh, subscriber recommendations. Every time you guys comment on any of my videos, a book that you think I would love, I add it to a Goodreads shelf and it becomes eventually a part of this whiteboard. So that's what the subscriber recommendation is. My must read books, I did 20 must read books in 2020. So that's what that blue is. And then I had the already owned categories. So any books that are on my physical shelves that I haven't read yet from previous hauls. And then classics. So I'm trying to catch up on some classics. That's what that is. Super self-explanatory. <laughs> and then my new category is sequels. So a lot of these books now that I'm starting are the beginnings of new series and I want to make sure that I am reading and finishing series that I start before starting new series. That's why sequels is now a category. So that was just a heads up. Without further ado, let's start rolling. All right, let's get started with our Rolled Dice April TBR. Roll one. And that landed on six. So that is The Winter of the Witch. So excited. Here is the first book I will be reading, the final book in the Winter Night trilogy. I'm so excited about this. I loved the second book so much, so I can't wait for this. Now it is time to erase and replace. Okay, so I replaced number six with Down Among the Sticks and Bones, which I just abbreviated, and that is the second book in the Wayward Children series by Sean and McGuire. So next roll. Number two, that is the subscriber recommendation, which is finally been rolled, and that is No Exit by Taylor Adams, which I will put a picture of right here. And this is a intense thriller that I've been really looking forward to reading. One of you all said I would love it, so I'm so excited to get this one and read it next month. Okay, and I have now replaced the subscriber recommendation with Jurassic Park, which I now own, and one of you recommended I read, so I'm very excited. Next roll, roll number three. Number 12. That is All Our Wrongs Today by Elon Masai. I'm really excited about this one. I think it has a lot to do with time travel. It's a sci-fi. I can't wait. So that is book number three. And let's do an erase and replace. And I have replaced that with Lying in Wait which is another thriller book that I have owned for a couple months now. So let's do roll number four. Number seven, that is Sword of Destiny by Andrei Sapkowski. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to continue on with the Witcher series. I really enjoyed the first book in this series, and this is the second short story collection now. And after I read this, I think I can watch the show. So that will be book number four. Now I have put in Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey, which is the second book in the Hot and Hammered collection. So that will now be at number seven. Let's do roll number five. Number eight, that is Crown of Feathers by Nik Nikki Pal Preto. This is a young adult fantasy book that I've had on my shelves for a while and I can't wait to read it. I have replaced that with Wicked Saints, which is another young adult fantasy. So that takes up space number eight, and we will do roll number six. Number one, the new release. I'm so excited. I will put a picture of the cover right here. It is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which is a mouthful, by Grady Hendrix. This sounded so, so great. I can't wait to read it. So I will be purchasing this one to read next month as well. now 
replaced that with is You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel, which is a really cute sounding romance contemporary book coming out next month. So let's do roll number seven. Six. That is Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shannon McGuire, which is the sequel to Every Heart a Doorway. So that will be my seventh book that I'm reading. And I've actually now replaced that with Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. Since I no longer have any other sequels that I want to write down, I replaced that with a must read in 2020 book. So last roll, this is roll number eight. And that is number five. Five is The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. This is one of my must read books in 2020 and it is a World War One and Two, I believe, historical fiction. So I'm really excited about this one. Next month, I will have Foundry Side on my whiteboard. All right, that ended up being a really great roll the dice month. So I'm really excited about these books. Let's go over them one more time, which ones I will be reading this month. The first being one that I didn't finish from last month. So I'm sad to say that I did not get to Wuthering Heights from last month. And this one is one that will roll over to this month. So instead of eight books this month I have to read, I have nine books. But that's okay because I'm excited to read it, even though a lot of you hate this book. <laughs> And then now getting into the books I rolled for this month, I have The Sword of Destiny by Andrei Sapkowski, which is the second short story collection in the Witcher series. I loved The Last Wish, so I'm really excited to continue on with this series and be back in this world with Geralt and Dandelion because they're the best. So very excited for this. I also have All Our Wrongs Today by Elon Must Die. So this is a book that has been on my TBR for a really long time because I think it has a really fun premise behind it. So it says that it's set in 2016 and there's this main character named Tom who basically lives in this world where there's no war, there's no poverty, technology has solved all of mankind's problems, but he himself is miserable. He is alone, he's depressed, uh, and so he has the opportunity to use this time machine to go to an alternate reality where humanity itself is suffering, like there's war, there's poverty, like there's all these horrible things that are happening, but he himself has such a better life in this alternate reality where like he has a loving wife, he has a great career. So now he has to choose between these realities. Does he choose this life that sucks for himself but is great for everyone else? Or <laughs> does he choose the great life for himself but risk humanity suffering because of it. So I think that this is a really fun premise. I love sci-fi thrillers, things that take a twist on some sort of technology or something like that. So I'm really excited for this book. I also have one of my must read books of 2020, and that is The Alice Network by Kate Quinn, which is historical fiction following two women, one who is a spy during World War One, and one who is a single pregnant teenager right after World War II and is trying to find her cousin who was lost during World War II. So I'm, I've heard unbelievable things about this book. I'm always hesitant to pick up historical fictions because I just always feel like I'm not going to enjoy them. But then every time I pick up one, I always end up loving it. So I don't know why I have this hesitation. So I feel like I'm going to love this, even though I've been like holding off on picking it up. I don't know why I do these things to myself. Another book was Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shawn and McGuire, which is the second book in the Wayward Children's series. I read Every Heart a Doorway and I found it odd. <laughs> I liked it, but it had some issues with it. So I'm curious to see how I like this one because I know that some of the books follow only certain characters and new characters come into the play. So we'll see how I like this. And then I've got The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden, the final book and the Winter Night trilogy. 
I loved The Girl in the Tower. It was my favorite read last month. I'm so excited to finish off this trilogy with this book. I've heard that it's the best in the trilogy, which is like, how can you get better than The Girl in the Tower? I don't know. So I'm really, really looking forward to this one. And then I also have Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto, which is one of the young adult fantasy books from last year that everyone was raving about and loving. So I'm really excited to read this. This is a bigger book than I expected. It is like, how big is this? Oh, it's not that big. I guess it just has chunky pages. It's almost 500 pages. So a little less than 500, so it shouldn't be that bad. I don't really know much of what this is about. I think it's about people who ride phoenixes, based on the cover. So I'm excited to dive in and see what all the hype was about. And then two books I have ordered that have not gotten to me yet, but that I will be reading next month. The first being one of my subscriber recommendations, which was No Exit by Taylor Adams. This is a thriller about a woman who gets caught in a blizzard and has to pull off of the road because she can't drive through the blizzard. So she pulls off into this little gas station with a little diner attached and she sees a girl in the back of this truck who seems to be kidnapped and realizes that one of the people in this diner is holding a child captive in their car and she has to figure out who it is and get help in this blizzard. So this sounds so good, so creepy. I'm so excited to read this. I've heard wonderful things uh, and I'm so glad that one of you recommended it to me. And then the second book that is coming my way is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which is such a mouthful. This is by Grady Hendrix. Uh, this sounds like so much fun. The little tagline is what sold me. It said it was a cross between Fried Green Tomatoes, which I love that movie, <laughs> Fried Green Tomatoes meets Dracula. So like say no more. <laughs> it is about a woman's book club who slay vampires. I'm in. I'm so there. I love vampires, even though they've kind of disappeared from the publishing world. Uh, let's bring them back. And I'm super excited to read this book because this is gonna be great. I don't see how this can't be great. And early reviews have been so positive of this book. And I feel like Grady Hendrix is an author that really wasn't on my radar prior to this release. But looking at his backlog of books, all of them look like they kind of have this brand of like horror, but like funny horror. So I'm really curious if I love this book, I might have to start reading his backlist titles because some of them sound so, so clever and so great. Like I'm so interested in reading some of his other books as well. So if you've read any Grady Hendrix, definitely leave those comments down below and let me know which other Grady Hendrix book do you think I should read after this one? Those are the nine books I will be reading in the month of April. Do you see any that you are excited for me to get to? Do you see any favorites? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And until next time.